In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a no-code AI agent using both OpenAI's brand new agent builder, the tool that has been taken over the internet, and NADN, which is the most powerful and popular no-code automation platform on the market. We'll walk through both tools step by step, explore their features, and look at the key differences so that you can decide which one is better choice for your projects. And don't worry, this is a complete beginner-friendly tutorial. Even if you have never built anything with AI before, you'll be able to follow along and build your first agent by the end of this video. So make sure you like and subscribe. Let's dive right in. All right, so let's first get started with OpenAI's uh, agent builder, and then we're gonna go ahead and build an AI agent with NADN as well. And then at the end, I'm gonna kind of put them side by side like this, and I kind of compare the two differences. We're gonna focus on the AI agent node in particular for both NADN and agent work, uh, OpenAI's agent builder, because the rest of them is gonna get too complicated. But for this one, I just wanna focus on these two. All right, so let's first get started with OpenAI's agent builder. So first things first, let me expand this a little bit. Um, all you have to do is head over to uh, platform.openai.com slash agent dash builder. I'm going to put the link in the description so that way you can just click on it and it'll get there. Once you come here, you can, uh, obviously you have to have an account, so make sure you open your account. All right, so once you're here, you're just going to click on create, and this is going to create a brand new workflow for you. This automatically comes with the start my agent. Uh, this is just kind of by default. Uh, so this is basically the trigger. The starting point is the trigger. As you click on this, as you can see, it says input as text. And then the my agent is basically the AI agent node that you can build and uh, further customize to do something in particular. So uh, just to give you a quick introduction on the canvas itself, on the left hand side, these are the different nodes that you can apply. So let's say you want to add another AI agent. All you have to do is click on agent here. This is just going to add another node uh, for you here, that agent node, where then like, for example, you can, you know, kind of drag and drop and attach these thing these things together. So let me get rid of that. And then obviously on the left hand side, you have a bunch of other ones. Like I said, we won't focus on, on those for now. I'm just going to create something, a kind of a customer uh, service related agent. So that way you can see this being, uh, actually useful case. All right. So, so the first thing you need to do is obviously, so if I get rid of this, the start, you can't get rid of the start. You cannot delete this node. If you click on delete, this is just going to say the start node cannot be deleted because this is essentially a trigger node. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually build a customer service related agent. Again, this is just going to be a quick tutorial. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to add an agent here. So this is agent is going to get added and you're going to click on this little node right here and just hold and, dra and drag it and attach it to the agent. Node. Now this means that your starting point or your trigger is attached to your agent node so that way when you uh, actually start to test this which we're going to do in a little bit you'll be able to have this work workflow initiated all right so on the right hand side this is basically the details of your agent the first thing is the name so for the name i'm just going to change this to a classification agent so i'm just going to type here and as you can see on the left hand side uh, my uh, node is changing here. I misspelled that. There you go. Classification agent. So the instructions. This is basically uh, a way for you to describe the functionality of this particular agent. So that's where, as you can see right here, it says describe desired model behavior, tone, tool usage, and response style. So you're basically giving this instruction how to behave and if it has access to other tools, how to operate those tools, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly type in the instructions here. All right, so the instructions I typed was classify the user's intent into one of the following categories, return, return item, cancel subscription or get information. So again, like I said, this is a classification agent for a customer service. So that's why I'm just copying the instruction. So that's all we need to do, right? We're just giving this a instruction on how to behave and what to do. All right. So the next thing is include chat history. What this means is that if you toggle this on, it just gives it memory. So that way it remembers your information when you're interacting with uh, with with this particular agent because obviously you want to have the agent remember your past conversations so that way you can interact with this easily. The second one is model. Obviously, you can choose any of these models. I'm just going to leave it as GPT-5. Reasoning effort, you can keep it at low. Tools here, again, if you want to add like any additional tools like web search or anything like that, all you have to do is click on this and you can add it. But we're not going to focus on that because I want to build something very, very simple. All right, the output format. So this is where we need to have the agent identify how it should respond to the user, right? So we're going to click on this. There's multiple options. There's text, there's JSON, and there's widget. I'm going to click on JSON here. And then what I'm going to do is click on add schema. And this is where now we can add uh, properties, a description, and then also how it should respond. So I'm going to click on add here. The property name, I'm just going to do classification. 
And then I'm just going to say classify users intent, right? Just something very, very simple. And then for the type, we're just going to change this to enum because we need to have this basically classified as three different objects, right? One's going to be return item because that's what we mentioned earlier. The other one is going to be cancel subscription, cancel subscription. And one more is going to be uh, get information. That's what we mentioned earlier. There you go. Perfect. All right. So that's all we need to do. And if I click on update now, it looks like everything is good to go. So we can click on more here, but don't worry about this for now. You just leave it as it is. All right. So now let's go ahead and test this out because essentially we just created our first agent here, right? So if I click on preview, this is going to open up this test workflow here. And this is where now I can interact with my agent here. So what I'm going to do is now I'm just going to basically ask it uh, a quick question and say, hello, I want to cancel my subscription. I just want to see how this thing responds, right? Subscription. I'm going to press enter. So now this is going to start. There you go. Perfect. Now the classifying agent is going to be classified this thing. And perfect, right? It worked. It looks like classification cancel subscription. So I was able to the agent was able to determine uh, one of three different outputs cancel subscription, uh, return item, and then also get information. So now let's try it again. So I'm just going to do this time. Hi, I want to return my purchase, right? I'm just going to say that click on enter. So now same thing. Now it's going to classify it. And this time it should classify it as return item. There you go. Perfect. So very, very simple. As you can see, this is a very, very simple uh, AI agent, but you can see that now it's working. And then now we can add additional nodes. So if you want to have an if and else statement, so now you can say uh, you can add this here and you can say if the classification agent's response is, for example, return agent, do this or do that, right? So that's how simple it is to build this thing. Very, very easy. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, I don't want to, I don't want to obviously build a very complicated workflow. We're going to do it later on, but I just want you to get started on how to build the agent. All right. So now let's go ahead and take a look at an NADN AI agent and how to, uh, build an agent. Then we're going to come back and compare both of them here. All right. So this is NADN's canvas. You can create a, uh, um, free account. I'm going to put the link in the description. Just click on that. You can create that account and you'll be able to come right here. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Uh, this will be your blank canvas here. Uh, so the way to the way the NADN workflow works or the way the first step works is by some kind of a trigger. So if I click on the plus button here, now I can search for AI agent. There you go. And I can click on agent here and this is going to automatically pull this thing up, right? As you can see, this automatically inserted this AI agent for me. So the first things first, I'm going to click on chat model because we need to provide this AI agent a brain, right? And if I click on the plus button, all of these different large language models open up for me on the side. I can choose Anthropic, Google's Gemini, uh, open AI chat model and all, the, uh, all everything else. So let's go ahead and uh, select open AI. I'm just going to click on open AI. So now this is going to uh, open up a credential. So the way to add your credentials, you just basically create your new credentials. You go to open AI's account, add your API key, bring it over here and just literally paste it, click on save and your agent will, or your open AI chat model uh, will be uh, uh, attached to this particular model. And as you can see right here, I have access to everything. So I can, I can have access to my, uh, GPT-5 if I want to. I'm just going to click on GPT-5 because that's what we selected earlier. All right. Perfect. So another thing is memory. Just like we looked at our open, uh, AI's agent builder, we have the ability to add memory. If I just going to click on simple memory, this is just going to basically give this agent the ability to remember my past conversation. Tools. This is a, another, uh, Im important, uh, aspect of an NADN AI agent here. I can add different tools. So for example, I can add Wikipedia here. So that way I have access to the internet. And for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So I'm just going to add these three nice little tools or the chat model here, the memory and the tool. So now if I double click inside my AI agent, this is going to open up this canvas or this interface for me. So just like we saw on agent builder where we gave it instructions, that's exactly what we're going to do. The way to do that, I'm going to click on option and click on system message here. It will automatically come as you're in a helpful assistant. So this is where we can now add additional, um, instructions to further make this agent more powerful. So same thing. I'm just going to say, use the Wikipedia tool because it has access to that to answer users inquiries, right? Something simple like that. So that way you can see um, how easy it is to 
um, instruct our particular agent. I think I did a bunch of spelling mistakes. There you go. All right. I'm just going to say, there you go. All right. Cool. So that's all I'm going to do. So now the way to test it is you just click on uh, open chat and this is going to open up the chat here. So I'm just going to say, hello, what is the capital of Spain, right? Something very simple. So when I press enter, now this is going to interact with our chat model here to understand users inquiry. And there you go. Now it's going to use the Wikipedia tool to have at, to uh, get that information. And there you go. The very quick and easy answer just said Madrid, right? So that's how you can build uh, an AI agent. Very simple. Obviously, you can make this very complex. The great thing about NADN is you have access to multiple different tools. Oop, I didn't mean to add that. You have access to multiple different tools. So I can add a lot of tools here to make this agent very, very powerful, like a Google Calendar and all of these different applications that it has access to. And that's what makes NADN really, really powerful. Again, this is not the goal of this is not to uh, create a too complicated agent. My goal was to just show you how easy it is to make a simple agent. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about NADN AI agents or how to create complex agent, check out the community. I'm going to put the link in the description. You can check out we have an entire beginner's course and then also uh, advanced courses on how to make complex agent with NADN, including how to create agent and launch your AI agency for, um, you know, for clients if you want to make money with AI. Anyways, check the link in the description. You can check out our community right here. All right. So that was a quick way to make the NADN AI agent. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the differences between the two here. All right. So first things first. Uh, if we just take a look at user interface, obviously the user interface is very different. Personally, I prefer NADN's user interface because I've been using NADN for a long time now, but essentially it's uh, a lot more, uh, in, in my opinion, you have access to a lot more just visually as to see, because when you see, when you press the execute, it will actually show you exactly which different nodes are being initiated. Uh, as far as the, the open AI's agent builder, obviously this is just new. So it doesn't have, you don't have access to a lot of different tools at this point. And when you click on the agent itself, so if I click on the agent, obviously this is very, there's not a lot of, uh, uh, customization options compared to like the tools that you have access to. However, when it comes to the tools here, just like in NADN, you have access to these different tools and, and, uh, in your open, uh, AI agent builder. One of the big ones is the MCP servers. So this is how you can actually uh, add third party servers like, you know, your Zapier's, your Shopify of the world, and then everything else, including the Gmail, Google Calendar, everything, right? And in NADN, same thing when you click on the tools here, all of the tools that you have access to shows up here. At this point, obviously, NADN has a lot more access to different tools versus OpenAI's, uh, OpenAI's tool agent but with MCP, you can connect different things. Now, one of the biggest restriction uh, is the large language model. Of course, in OpenAI's agent builder, you only have access to the OpenAI's large language models, the GPTs of the world, versus your NADN, where you have the ability to have access to multiple large language models like Entropics chat model, Google Gemini, Olama, everything else, right? Because you have the ability to use these different LLMs based on whatever there's, they're good at. So for example, Claude Sonnet 4.5 is the best model on the market when it comes to coding. With NADN, you can easily use that. And then obviously with your open AI, you can't really use that at this point. And I don't think they will ever allow you to use a large language model unless you use an MCP. Uh, that's other than their own, uh, because their point is to obviously promote their own models. But anyway, so that's one of the big ones. Um, and another huge advantage of NADN is the fact that, uh, NADN AI agents is the fact that you can actually host your NADN not only on the cloud version, but also on a private server, or you can host it locally. So for example, one of the most popular tools is hosting your NADN AI agent in a virtual private server. The, one of the most popular one is the Hostinger VPS NADN. You can click on the link in the description. You can go to uh, this page right here where you can now host NADN, all of your AI agent inside your own uh, private server. So I use this KVM2, which is plenty. So click on choose plan here. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you through how to do this for those of you who are not familiar. 
because this is super useful. A lot of people in my community and myself use Hostinger whenever there's need for uh, hosting everything, all, all of any then on your private server. So because this is the cheapest option compared to your cloud account. All right, so you can choose, uh, choose the 12 months or 24 months. I would suggest choosing the 24 months because this will give you the best deal there. Um, and then also great thing is that you uh, Hostinger is our main channel sponsor. So we have a coupon code. So if you click on have a coupon code and just type AI workshop, and click on apply. This is going to give you actually an additional 10% off. So that way, this is the best deal. As you can see, for 24 months, it's $150. So that's the best deal you could possibly get. Everything else, you're going to leave the same. Obviously, your server location, depending on where you are, they have a bunch of servers, operating systems. So this is where you're going to click on application and click on N8N. So this is their most popular one. You're going to click on confirm. And then now what you're going to do is you're going to click on continue. And this is going to make you sign up for an account. If you don't have an account, go ahead and sign up for a quick account. I already have an account, so I'm just going to quickly log in. Okay, so once you log in, then you're going to go ahead and put your billing address and payment information and click on continue. And this will go ahead and install everything. Okay, so once it installs your NADN, as you can see right here, so it's going to bring you to this um, uh, dashboard here. I'm going to click on manage. And what this is going to do is this is going to open your NADN Hostinger dashboard. As you can see right here, the Hostinger horizon is on the left-hand side, but right now I'm on, I'm on my VPS. So in order to open my NADN, all I have to do is click on manage app, and this is going to go ahead and open my NADN workflow. Now, again, if this is your first time, this is going to ask you to log in or create a uh, account. Uh, but if you already have an account, I'm just going to click on sign in and this is going to open up. So as you can see now, you can use everything except this is on your own virtual private server, as you can see right here. So nadn.srv.hostinger.cloud. So this is sitting on your own virtual private server on um, um, Hostinger's cloud. Super useful. Again, like I said, a lot of people use this because they like the privacy aspect of it um, and they want to take advantage of that. So check that out if you are, want to use this particular operation. Like I said, all of these links will be in the description below so that way you can take advantage of it. All right, well, that was a quick overview of NADN and also our OpenAI's agent builder. Obviously, uh, we're in the beginning stages here for OpenAI's agent builder. There's going to be uh, a lot more, I'm sure, that they will add different features. And this is a very exciting space. And like I said, if you're interested on learning how to make money with AI agents and automations and uh, how to launch your own AI agency, please check out the community link in the description. Uh, we have an entire five week program where you can teach will we'll teach you how to launch your AI agency and start working with clients on how to make money with AI. We have a voice AI uh, course as well. And then also obviously an NADN course for and an and and then beginners course and advanced course so that way uh, you can take a look at uh, and get advantage of that and of course like if you run into any questions about anything we have a great community where myself my team and i will work with you to resolve any issues or collaborate and find a business partner in there anyways thanks for watching hopefully you found that video helpful make sure you like and subscribe because i've got a lot more content coming up that you don't want to miss thanks for watching and see you on the next one